morning everyone. My name is Arvind Sanav Segrel and we are from group 5. And today we are going to explain about Whirlpool Turbine System. So let's go to the introduction. A whirlpool turbine able to provide energy throughout the day for thousands of homes. This turbine can produce a low cost power solution for rural areas. The generator uses flowing water to provide energy to power up up to 60 homes. It has a long lifespan and requires lower maintenance, which means this whole system in this whole system only the turbines make makes the rotation movement right so we need to handle the turbine it carefully so that it requires a low maintenance the last one is this turbine can produce as much as 10 megawatt in power output which can power up a small city the second one is working principle so first is the hole is dug near the water source to install a concrete basin from a prefabricated part. Second one is a generator and impeller are installed in the basin, the center of the basin. Third one, the water flow through a straight inlet and then it goes, water flows into the basin and a turbine withdraws the rotational energy. The last one is it able to convert into electrical energy. So back to the first slide, as the image right there, it can explain how how a turbine, a whirlpool turbine works. Okay. Initially, the wall is lift up, right? So the water from the river pass through the inlet to the basin. So as the water rotates inside the basin, it creates the vortex. Okay. As the vortex rotates the impeller, it creates the energy, rotational energy, so which will convert into electrical energy with the help of generator. So as you can see from here, as the reduced speed of the turbine, it is ensured that most of the fish can pass through this turbine without any danger. Okay? This is much more difficult to achieve in a normal hydro plant. So I think this is the best turbine system for the rural areas. Thank you. So the next slide will be about literature finding, which is explained by my partner. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mama Alifaika Rubiami and my metric number is 197273. I will tell you about the literature finding of this project. Okay, the, from what we have uh, uh, done our research, we find that there is a company that has to uh, that, uh, that is doing the we put the mine uh, which is named as uh, the Berlin Hydro uh, that come from Belgium. The product that they are producing can generate about 50 kilowatt to 100 kilowatt power that uh, normally can uh, produce energy to light so enough for city homes, uh, for their largest model, and the models that they are doing uh, do not harm the ecosystem uh, like what uh, Arvind has said before because of the turbine and the the turbine also have a low low pressure and the, the this uh, wind turbine that they are currently producing also need less uh, maintenance because the only thing that uh, they are working is only their turbine so they only need to change their turbine if there is any uh, any error with their turbine and but and also the installation of the whirlpool turbine need almost one week to finish uh, next I will uh, pass up to my partner thank you uh, good day everyone so today I will talk about the theory of the bind. So here the theory of the bind is about the uh, how the movement of water and the movement of the vortex. So
So from here, as the first thing we're going to talk about is the flow of the water. When the water is going in, in the flow part of the turbine, <coughs> the water will move as fast as possible. So it's like uh, in very high velocity. So when it comes to the uh, turbine or generator part, it will start to uh, rotate the turbine in a very high velocity as the movement of as the initial movement or velocity of the water. So when when this come to the turning of the uh, generator, so the the center axis will facing a very uh, low amount of pressure because there is a very high velocity of movement of water. Then this vortex can happen at the mixed axis of center. <coughs> uh, besides that. The mid axis center, uh, where the vortex will occur, uh, it start to increase the vortex movement along the all the uh, bottom of the basin of the water. So this is the how the theory of turbine, the water movement and the speed of velo the velocity of water that going into the fuel pool turbine. Next slide. <coughs> so here the introduction to the vortex motion. So I going uh, like where. It's like the water movement. You can see the the water is turning. So this is can easy can form a movement. Uh, I mean the vortex formation. So from here you can see this. This is the uh, simulation, 3D simulation of this uh, video. It's about the vortex circulation. Okay. So now we'll come to the vortex motion of the pool turbine. So as we all know that the vortex motion of the of the is a, actually a part of the movement where it form from the velocity of the water. So when when it's a very high velocity of water, the move the vortex motion will occur very easily when is the uh, come to the turbine part. So you can see here. Uh, there is a lot of a uh, lot of concepts whereby turbine, tur turbulent, uh, laminar, and transient flow, right? So this one, the turbulent flow will make a uh, law in making up the, of the vortex uh, circulations or swelling up of the water movement. <coughs> As you can see, the water movement also uh, from the from the generator it goes down into the, into the lower part of the basin. So when the lower part of the basin at, the, uh, at that area, the circulation of the vortex motion is very, very, uh, how's that? Uh, it can be seen clearly uh, because the movement, it come, the movement of water come to be very sharp pointed end. So it start to uh, back recirculate back the water to the river or to the uh, reservoir. So from the this this slide is going to talk about the conceptual studies of the whirlpool turbine. So the conceptual studies of the whirlpool turbine is uh, is like where the part of the area to be digged up to put a turbine turbine and generator to create a whirlpool turbine and also the uh, the concepts of vortex motions and also there is the limited area where the turbine can be positioned up to create a, a great amount of energy generating uh, or we can say that power generating to, uh, to, to give the power or to, come, to transfer the power to the isolated area. So from here, the, the, the slide I talked about just now is about the power generating and here is like you can see the movement or the flow of the power generating in the, from the whirlpool turbine. So when the water in, the power generation will occur here when start the when the generator start or turbine start to move swirling up. So when they're swirling up, when the high amount of velocity uh, on the generator, it will create a high spots of water out. So when high spot of water out means it is a high amount of power being transferred or being formed. So, I think uh, that's all for my part. So, I giving up to my uh, partner to talk about the next slide. Thank you. Thank you, Ignace, for the pleasant presentation. So, 
I'll be talking about uh, the 3D modeling and designing of this uh, of this design. So this is a the 3D design of the whirlpool turbine that I have done using Katya. So as you can see from here, the design is quite unique. The design, the basin is designed in a way to create a whirlpool. So the whirlpool, let's say from here. Then let me explain part by part. So. Firstly, as the water enters, you can see there's a slide, slide, automatic slide gate. And this slide gate, the function for it is to control the flow of the water. So as the water comes, because as you can see, there's a limited amount of area for the water. If overflow of water has, uh, come, uh, has been inside the, the basin, the water would overflow and uh, vortex cannot be created for to move the termite. So that's, that's the reason for this uh, automatic gate. Next, when the water flows into here, as you can see, there's a curve right here. The reason for this curve is because we want to create a vortex. We need the water to move in a circular motion to create that whirlpool. That, what, that vortex, just like my friend uh, explained. So, as the vortex is moving, it will create a whirlpool. And the whirlpool, as we all know, a whirlpool and a vortex is directed downwards. It doesn't go sideways, it doesn't go left or right. So we need to direct that whirlpool and motion downwards. For that reason is why we made the turbine to be below the vortex. So as the vortex as the as the vortex moves the turbine, the turbine as you can see this yellow rod, this yellow rod will be as you can see on top of this yellow rod that's where the generator will be. The generator as the water moves in a vortex motion, the, it moves the turbine and the turbine will generate as the movement of turbine which makes kinetic energy and the kinetic energy will be will be able to move the generator and the generator will convert it to electrical energy. So as you can see from here, the turbine, our turbine design is only 5 blades. The reason why we use 5 blades and the blade is actually not, uh, we didn't make design our blades to be sharp. So it needs to have a curve, curve uh, design. So the reason for this, like my friend said in the introduction, the we design our turbine to have only five plates because we didn't we want the small debris to go. Small debris can uh, able to pass through, and also small uh, aquatic life also can pass through unharmed. For this reason is why. We made a uh, we made only for a design of five plates, and there's a big amount of space for this kind of small aquatic life and also small debris to pass through. Okay, as you can see from here, as the water goes, the vortex will be uh, towards da downward and moves the turbine. Okay, next. Okay, this will be this is the front view, top view of the, the of the design, and this is the side view of the design. As you can see from here. As the water from here, the water moves, it goes in the vortex, circular motion, and goes down into the turbine. Next. Okay, and this is the front view. And the front view is where you can see where the water is directed. As the as the water is going towards downwards, this is where the water is directed out. As the water goes down, the water, the debris, and even at a, at a small aquatic life is directed outwards from this. And there's only two types of material that is, I mean, not two, about three types of material being used for this design. First is concrete uh, for the basin and also the, to direct the water out from the basin. Next would be the turbine. The turbine is made out of cast iron steel in cast iron on stainless steel to avoid corrosion so that it would last longer and also the automated uh, gate. And also it the, the turbine can also be made out of uh, carbon fiber to last longer and this design is actually predicted to last for about 100 years and it's in a small scale but it can be the, done bigger it's uh, done in a small scale but it can be done bigger for rural, rural areas and for people to people who are living near the river thank you that's all for today for my uh, 3D explaining of the 3D model I would like to invite my friend Ani to explain his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Kishore. Okay, so, first of all, my name is Hani Abdullah Nahadi. My metric number is 195456. Okay, 
Okay, so today let's see first. Uh, we have listened all the theory about the whirlpool turbine. So now let's see for the calculation. So this question asks about how much hydropower could generate from a whirlpool turbine for a typical small hydro system. The turbine efficiency that would be 85%, drive efficiency 95%, and generator efficiency 93%. With realistic low cross head of 2.5 meters and a turbine that could take a maximum flow rate of 3 meter cube per second. Okay. okay. First of all, the formula that is going to be used for this question is power P equals MTH net multiplied by the efficiency. So P, we all know P is the power. This one, M is the mass, G is the gravity, and the, these three is the basic that we all know, but the new one is the H net and the efficiency. So I'm gonna explain what is the, what's it, the H net. So the H net is the net of the head. This is the gross head physically measured at the side, less any head losses. To keep things simple, head loss, so we can, if we want to find the H net, we can be it can be H net equal to H cross multiplied by 0 0.9. And the last one is the efficiency. So the efficiency is the product of all the component efficiencies. All the component known, uh, we can combine all the all the efficiency. No need to separate each one of them, which are normally the turbine drive the system and generator. Okay, first of all. We're gonna find the efficiency, which is this simple. So, like I said, go back to the question. Okay, for efficiency, like I said, we can combine by multiply all the efficiency, which is this one 85%, 95%, and 93%. So, first, So 85% is 0 0.85 multiplied by 93% is 0 0.93 and the last one 95% is 0 0.95 when you calculate you will get around 75.1% or 0 0.751 this is for the efficiency so first we get efficiency and the other the next one will be H net. So, like I have mentioned before, the H net is H cross multiplied by 0 0.9. So, from the question, we know that H cross is equal to 2.5. This one is the question given. Multiplied by 0 0.9, you will get around like 2.25 meters. So you get efficiency, you get H net, this one you get, this one you get, G you know is 9.81 meter per second square. The next one is we want to know the mass. So from the question, the the mass that given is mass that given is 3 meter cube per second. So we are going to convert into lead per second. So eventually we don't have to convert anymore. So we just convert right, right now. So we will convert by multiply by 1000. So we will get, eventually we will get 3000 liter per second. Okay, so now you got all. You got M, you got G, you know, H that you got, and F can see you got ready. So at the end, it will be P power that you want equal to 3000 multiplied by G you know is 9.81 multiplied by H net is 2.25 and multiplied by efficiency is 0 0.751 so you will, when you multiply you will get around 49,729 watt or 49.7 
below one. This is the hydropower that the whirlpool turbine can generate from this percentage and from the this edge cross. And the next part, I'm going to present about the recommendation for improvement of the whirlpool turbine. Okay, so first one of the recommendation that I have found is to don't use the whirlpool for a wound management. So, because if we use the whirlpool for the wound management, it will predispose and lead the patient to risk of bacterial cross contamination, which means uh, it will cause a lot of the bacteria inside of the turbine. And the second one, damage fragile tissue. And the sorry. And the second one is the damage fragile tissue from high turbine forces. Okay, this one, as my friend have mentioned before that the, when the water go into the inlet and when it goes into the turbine, it will cause a lot of high power and high forces. So if we use the whirlpool turbine with the wound management, a lot of some some of the component that very sensitive might damage inside of the turbine and it, it will cause a lot of problem until like maybe we cannot fix it. And the last one, complication in extremity edema when arms and legs are treated in a dependent position in warm water. So this one like like the name the wood the, the wood management. So it might cause uh, the disease of the water that called edema when our body touch the water. Okay, the second point. And the second of the recommendation is the cost efficient mini hydro plant with low water ahead whirlpool design methodology for rural areas or micro hydro whirlpool power plants. Okay, this one is the development in mini hydro power production and it is contributed to the near future distributed generation. This one is the new project for the odd engineer that's still going on and still testing. Um, but it still it still cause some problem. So we'll see what, what's the problem for this one. So these are the problem which come in contact while implementing the power generation unit. Okay. First one is the high water head. And the second one, large flow of water. The third one, high cost of civil works will cost a lot. The last one, large cover areas and its operation maintenance it will cost. It, it, will, it will have to take like very large area to build this one. Okay. Meanwhile, we still can fix this all this problem by purpose the simple whirlpool turbine with the minimum of water head. Like I said, the problem is the high of very high of water head, so we will minimum it. And minimum of water flow, minimum of cover area, possible design of basin with PVC and its robustness. So we will just, we will make the basin with the strong lead of the PVC. And the last one flexibility for the standalone and grid connected system. And the last recommendation that I have found is the, about the basic design, like my partner Kishore mentioned just now. Okay, first of all, the shape should be in a conical shape. The, the shape of the, the turbine should be in a conical shape. And the second one, the optimum number, the best number of the blade should be four or five, not more than five. And the third one, aluminum turbine blades are better than steel. Yes, because the steel can cause the rust when it touched with the water. And the last one for the basic design is the distance between the turbine seats and the top of the water vortex is where optimal height of the channel. This is like, uh, if this is the turbine on top, and this is the water. So this, the distance between this one, we have to calculate to find the perfect distance to get to get to get the perfect height for the channel that water can flow in 
and then make the energy then can flow out in the what's it called in the um, perfect height yeah um, I think that is all from me and from our group so um, okay so for the conclusion the whirlpool turbine system can be used for the rural areas up to 60 homes uh, and the for, for the for the for the home that near the river and the turbine system will create all the energy and then produce to that all the up to 60 homes for 24 hours and 7 days non-stop but for the big city or the large area I'm not suggested to use the turbine system I will suggest I would suggest to use other of the turbine or other energy to create the energy. So I think that's all from us. Thank you very much. And if you have made any of mistaken or any any something bad, so we are apologize from now. And hope to see you guys again. Thank you very much. And see you. So this is the small model of our wheel pull turbine sister. So. Uh, Close-up picture of this will be attached together with the soft copy. Thank you. Thank you very much.